Very warm welcome to you to the CBS Family Service. On this last Sunday of the month of May, we want to extend the warmest welcome to every single one of you. Thank you for plugging in, for being with us this morning. Every family service, we look forward to a great time in God's word and a great time as we worship him. And so we want to extend that warm welcome to you, our special guests. My name is George Murichu, and I'm serving as your moderator for this day. And we have lined up a great time, a great service as we lift up worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And today we'll be led by this amazing anointed team, the CBS worship team, in just a short while. We'll also have a special message from the presiding bishop of uh, Sitam, that is Reverend Callisto Odede. A special message preparing us as the citizens of Kenya for the upcoming national elections. We welcome all who are listening in on Hope FM, all those watching us on Hope TV, and those live streaming on Sitam Church online channels. Welcome. Every Sunday at 10 a.m. East African time, it's time for CBS Family Service. And today, our hashtag is looking for a leader. Looking for a leader. And I'd like you to go right there to the comment section, and let's begin engaging as we use this hashtag, looking for a leader. If you can just go ahead and post your comments, drop a note about where you're following us from this Sunday morning. And as always, we want to start by lifting up worship and praise to the King of Kings. The psalmist said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. So join me in welcoming this anointed team as they lead us in a time of worship this morning. Karibuni sana. Amen, amen. And wherever you are, why don't you just rise up on your feet? You want to just declare that our God is great. He is awesome. Hallelujah. Amen.
Jesse, hallelujah.
Ulysses, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And so we crown you, Lord, with many crowns. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Cause all hail the power. All hail the power of Jesus. 
him honor the king of kings we join the song of angels we join them we join them we join them Hold
you join us in declaring worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God who was slain, but he did not remain on that cross. He did not remain in that tomb. He rose up triumphantly and is seated on the right hand of the Father in power and majesty. Let's crown him this morning. Let's crown him this day from wherever you're joining us this morning. We crown the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is crowned King of Africa. He is crowned King of the entire universe. There is none wiser than he is. There is none more powerful than he is. There is none more excellent, more worthy of our praise. And this morning, let's just go ahead and lift up our worship to him. Let's crown him with many, many crowns. Lord, in your holy presence, we lift you up, we enthrone you, we affirm that you are worthy of our praise, worthy to receive glory and honor, dominion belongs to you, power and majesty belong to you, Lord you are altogether wise and your wisdom is beyond searching out and as we have sung, to you do we ascribe all the majesty, Lord perhaps there are many times when we've ascribed it to our political leaders but Lord this this morning we want to affirm as the people of God that you and you alone not our political class not our leaders but you alone are crowned above all men you alone are crowned all leaders above all leaders you are lifted up high we crown you we ascribe to you the majesty that is to your name and child of God maybe you're watching us this morning and you're going through some difficult circumstances. It could even be uh, that you are incapacitated because of a sickness or a disease. Would you go ahead and just crown him in that space and say, Lord, you are the healer and I trust in you for healing. Lord, you are the one who reigns over this situation, whatever situation it is that has got you down. This morning, we want to affirm that our God is in charge. Our God is King and he reigns over all manner of situations. And so, Lord, we lift up your dear people before you this morning. Lord, those ones who are unwell, would you minister to them by your healing power? Out of your throne room, O oh God, we pray that healing virtue would flow, and that, Lord, as this service continues to unfold, may your people be strengthened. May the sick be strengthened in the name of the Lord. May they arise out of that hospital bed, or out of that place, O oh God, of being incapacitated. And Lord, may they receive power from on high. We want to thank you, Lord, that as we have sung over all the terrestrial ball, Lord, every tongue, every tribe, every kindred is to lift up praise, to join in that everlasting song. So we pray that, Lord, would you, would you receive praise, O oh Lord, from different places, even this very hour. We give you glory. We lift up your name. You are worthy. You are worthy Lamb of God. You are worthy Lion of Judah. And all of us, let's go ahead and declare amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, our music team. Join me in, in appreciating this team, uh, the trio of ladies leading us powerfully. Thank you so much. The Lord refresh our team. A truly blessed time in the Lord's presence uh, this morning as we consider, as we prepare our hearts for uh, what we've, we've talked about, which is hashtag looking for a leader. We want to continue engaging around that title. So would you go to the comment section, go right there to the chat section and tell us what has ministered to your heart this morning as we have been singing. You can just post it there and, and do remember to use that hashtag looking for a leader. And uh, we want to particularly welcome those who haven't been with us on CBS for our family service. We want to welcome you to this time. Remember that every Sunday at 10 a.m. East African time, it's a time for us to worship together, a time for us to hear God's word, and it's going to be a time where you will be ministered to. So we extend that welcome to those who are joining us for the very first time.
And we also want to welcome those who are joining us from different parts of the world, especially Namibia, East Timor, Romania, and the US of A, America. We want to welcome those uh, particular locations, people from those locations, because we have growing ministry presence in those locations. And as we sang that powerful hymn, crown him, crown him. We're saying that whether you're from that tribe, that kindred, that country, whatever place on this terrestrial ball, you are welcome to CBS Family Service. And so remember to drop a location right there. Tell us where you're, you're connecting with us from. And uh, remember to use the hashtag, looking for a leader. And just in case you have not yet subscribed to our content, want to encourage you to do that at this very juncture. Go right there, hit the notification bell, and whenever there's new content, whenever there's new uh, videos and, and various other, other initiatives we have, you will be notified. Go ahead and also hit that subscribe button and you will be kept abreast with what's going on in our ministry. I uh, want to encourage the Twips, those who use Twitter, and all the IG people, those on Instagram. Let's continue to engage. Pass this on to a friend, especially in this uh, year, election year for us as a country. We want to be well uh, prepared. We want to be well equipped as we approach the ballot. And so continue to spread the word using that hashtag, looking for a leader. And I'll be welcoming our speaker for today. As I mentioned, our speaker for today is none other than the presiding bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries. That is Reverend Callisto Odede. In a short while, he'll be sharing with us a lesson on our responsibility as Christians to fulfill our civic duty to the glory of God. But just before that, here's an, a, a clip that will furnish you with all you need to know about our ministry. Keep watching. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or for those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook, and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We encourage all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly with the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is no longer limited, but all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you, and please enjoy the rest of the service. The CETA Missions Department will be running medical camps from May to September, themed Perfecting Health, Radiating His Glory. We invite volunteer medics to register for the medical camp drive according to dates available or preferred mission station. Archers Post the 9th to the 13th of May, Marsabit, Gororukesa, Matarba, the 7th to the 10th of June, Kargi, the 20th to the 25th of June, Loyangalani, 19th to the 24th of September, Alterot, 26th 
to the 30th of September. We are currently receiving donations of medical supplies, cash and in kind for the communities in the various mission stations. Partner with us today through the pay bill number 693371, account Medical Camp or call 0709-861-165 during working hours or email missions at sidam.org for registration and inquiry. Donations are receivable in any SIDAM assembly near you. 3rd John chapter 1 verse 2 Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. To keep the work of this ministry going, we would like to enlist you to support this work. You've, you've seen part of the ministry that the Lord is enabling us to do. And so we want to encourage you to uh, worship the Lord with your tithes and your offerings. And as you do this, you will enhance God's work through this ministry. So we're going to uh, make a prayer for our tithes and our offerings. And thereafter, you, there's a clip that's coming your way to help you know how you can support this work and ensure that the gospel keeps going till the very ends of the earth. Let's believe and pray. Father in heaven, we are very, very grateful that you have enlisted us to be co-laborers with you, to join you in that which you're doing, to join your work. And part of how we support your work is to give, to give unto you, O oh God. So I pray that we would be cheerful givers and that, Lord, as we give to you, uh, would, you, would you multiply these resources, O oh God, and use them to advance your kingdom to the very ends of the earth, to every place on this terrestrial ball, till every tribe, till every kindred is saved, to the glory and honor of your name. We give you praise, we give you thanks. As many as believe it, go ahead and type out an amen, or even right there in your living room, shout amen and amen. So watch this clip on how you can give to the Lord your tithes or your offerings. God bless you. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITEM pay bill numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011-280-617-639-0. The SWIFT code K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. It's now time for us to hear God's word this morning and to bring to us God's word is no stranger here on CBS Family Service. This is none other than our presiding bishop, Reverend Callisto Odede. And the title of the sermon is Captivating. It is catchy. Captures what's going on in our scene right now. And I'm convinced that you will be blessed. I'm persuaded about that. And I know that as you engage using that hashtag, Many others will continue to be blessed. So keep that going. The hashtag is looking for a leader. And as you do that, put those emojis as we welcome our bishop to bring to us God's word. Most welcome, bishop. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Muricho. What a blessed uh, Sunday it is that the Lord has given us again today as we reflect both upon his word and upon these uh, matters that are facing us as a nation as we head towards the period of our elections. 
And I do believe that over the last few weeks as we've been sitting down and hearing from the Lord, that God has spoken to us that somehow our opinions and our ideas are taking shape in as far as the future of our nation is concerned. Allow me today to take us to a passage from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 through verse 5. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 through verse 5. Then Samuel said to all Israel, Behold, I have listened to your voice in all that you said to me, and I have appointed a king over you. And now, here is the king walking before you. But I am old and gray, and behold, my sons are with you. And I have walked before you from my youth even to this day. Here I am, bear witness against me before the Lord and his anointed whose ox have I taken, or whose donkey have I taken, or whom have I defrauded, whom have I oppressed, or from whose hand have I taken a bribe to blind my eyes with it? I will restore it to you. And they said, you have not defrauded us, or oppressed us, or taken anything from any man's hand. And he said to them, the Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day that you have found nothing in my hand. And they said, he is witness. I'd like to share with us on uh, a topic that I have entitled today, where are the white togas? Where are the white togas? In less than 80 days time, we will have the opportunity of electing our candidates of choice at the various levels of government here in Kenya. We sometimes think of the criteria that we do need when we are looking for a specific candidate, the kind of man or the kind of woman that they ought to be. We are sometimes moved by euphoria or emotions or sometimes ethnic anxiety, or even sometimes we turn to the chapter six of our national constitution in order to glean some insight on the kind of character of the candidate that we are looking for in the various elective positions. The history of the word candidate goes back to the ancient Roman days where people who stood for political office would wear special white robes that were called togas while campaigning. These men, when people would see them wearing these white robes or the togas, people called them candidati, which means whitened men. It is a name that is derived from the Latin word candidas, meaning pure white. It is a name that signifies purity, character, integrity. As a matter of fact, wearing that white toga indicated to the common wanainchi, if I may call them so, that the individual that is walking before you is a pure individual, is actually a candidate for an elective position. And as our campaigns also heat up, we ask the question, where are the white togas among those who are vying for various elective positions in our country? The same Latin word, candidas, is also the root word behind two English words. The word candid, to be pure, to be unbiased, to be straightforward, to be honest, to be forthright, to be authentic. But it also has a certain word, candida, which is a type of a parasite, a fungi, which consumes the bodies of human beings. We thank God for the many candidates who truly have come out in purity and in genuineness, in trustworthiness, in honesty, in authenticity. These are people who have been candid, and as a matter of fact, they probably would be people who today would be wearing white togas as they go out to campaign. 
But unfortunately, some who enter into the elective office do not come out wearing the white togas. They turn out to be parasites and leeches which are consuming and infecting their own people and amassing property at the expense of their people. Are we responsible stewards of our characters? Are we responsible stewards of our resources? Are we responsible stewards of our positions? Are we responsible stewards of the power that is given to us in whatever office it may be? It is only when we wear the white togas that we actually begin to make an impact and have an influence, whether in the music arena, the media arena, the politics arena, the education arena, the business arena, the financial world, the house of governance, because we are individuals who are not just going on in order to fleece or eat or in order to uh, feed on our people, but we are those whose character are being manifested in the kind of whiteness, if I may call it, uh, the toga or the robe that we would be wearing. The jewelry is out there asking the question, what is an authentic leader? What does he look like? How does a real man or woman of integrity look like? Are they reliable? Can a person like this be found out? And some have even said it is not easy to know whether a person is genuine or not before they get into a position. It is not possible to know whether a person can steal or not before they are faced with some money. It is not possible to know whether a person can abuse power or not before they are given power into their hands. And yet as those who have been given the responsibilities of putting people into offices, you and I are called upon to check who who is wearing the white toga? Who is walking in character, in authenticity, in purity? A person that we can actually trust with an office to bear responsibility on behalf of the people of Kenya. At one point, responding to scrutiny that the US presidential candidates received in one particular election, one contender complained and said, we are running for presidency, not for sainthood. And yet the truth of the matter is that your life is integrated in one. If you are lacking in character in the family, you are lacking in character in the business arena, you are lacking in character in your relationship, most likely when you get to the honorable office, you will not be wearing the white toga. You will also be lacking in character that will demonstrate that you are an individual who can be trusted. The passage before us is known as Samuel's farewell speech. A new constitution has been promulgated. The old one that had the position of the judge who would oversee all the administrative affairs of the nation of Israel has come to an end. A new one has been brought into being where now they were introducing monarchy and King Saul was taking on the position of coming into leadership. In a true sense of the word, it is a transitional statement that Samuel is making here as he hands over responsibility to the new king in the new monarchy and as he exits and moves on into the background. For a long while, he had straddled the entire landscape of the nation, moving from Bethel to Gilgal to Mishpah to Ramah, ruling and giving judgment. But now an old man, his reign was coming to an end, and he had introduced the establishment of monarchy. He began to look back in terms of his background and put himself into accountability before his own people. Let's look at some lessons that I think are pertinent to us as we examine what God might be saying in terms of the character qualities that we are looking for. First of all, forging ahead counterculture. The important aspect about the life of Samuel is that he makes a statement here that you have known me from the days of my youth. In essence, Samuel is saying, 
I did not just start to behave in a certain manner as an old man. He is saying, I began to behave the way I'm behaving even when I was a young man. The responsibilities that I had on them, the characteristics I had on them are the same characteristics that I've continued on with into my leadership into the time when I am an old man. But what kind of characteristics did he have? We look at 1 Samuel chapter 2 and from verse 12. Now, the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. And the custom of the priest with the people. When any man was offering a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork would uh, uh, brought up, uh, the priest uh, would take for himself. Thus they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Also before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, give the priest meat for roasting, as he will not take boiled meat from you, only raw. And if the man said to him, they must surely burn the, uh, uh, the fat first, then take as much as you desire, then he would say, no, but you shall give it to me now. If not, I will take it by force. Thus the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord, for the man despised the offering of the Lord. This is a strange record that shows us the context in which Samuel lived as a young man. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord, the Bible says. Impossible, you might protest. Sons of Belial, if it were not recorded in the Bible, you would not agree. What? They did not know the Lord. They were born and brought up within the very presence of the tabernacle of the temple then. They were raised up in the house of the Lord were not the first sounds they heard, the praises of God coming from the sanctuary. Was not the first sight they saw their father in his robes besides the altar with all the tables and the bread and the sacrifices and the incense round about him. And yet uh, here it is in black and white, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, for they did not know the Lord. This is unthinkable and almost inconceivable that the two sons of Eli, of, of the priest Eli, were considered sons of Belial, which means sons of Satan, and did not know the Lord. Not only did they not know the Lord, they totally misunderstood the ways of the priesthood to the extent they saw it as an opportunity for self-aggrandizement. So they were involved in meat-eating cattle, which they took illegally and which sometimes they would force the people even to give to them. This was the institution that was supposed to dispense justice. The institution that was concerned with how the standards of living ought to be. The institution that was supposed to be an anti-corruption institution. The sons of Eli formed a meat-eating cartel that despised the direction of the Lord, that oppressed the people, that cut deals, that took their share of the kickbacks. Immorality soon joined these, as we are told in the verses that come up that even they slept with the women that were in the temple. All over this is written the words as the young people would say, utadu, impunity. Impunity against the Lord. Impunities against the regulation. Impunity against the time in which they were living in. It is in this context that Samuel lived. But what kind of a person was Samuel? When we check the records, the Bible declares, but the young man Samuel grew in stature. Verse 26. Now the boy Samuel was growing in stature and in favor both with the Lord and with men. Here was Samuel. Everyone else is going east. 
Samuel made a decision, I'm going to add west. Everyone else is following the current, flowing with the current. Samuel made the decision, I'm going to go against the current. Everyone else is forming meat-eating cartels. Samuel made the decision, I'm going to go counterculture. I'm not going to be what everyone else is. Everyone else was delighting in being called the sons of Belial. Samuel delighted in being called the son of God because here was a man who had made a decision, I will not be moved by the masses. I will not do what everyone else is doing. If I am to make an impact in my generation, if I am to make an impact in my office, if I am to make a difference, I do not go according to the crowd. I follow the leadings of the Lord God Almighty. Hear me and hear me close. As we look for the man wearing the white toga, are there individuals out there? We have watched them perhaps not from the days of their youth, but we have watched the offices they have held. We have watched the responsibilities that they have had. We have watched how they have related with their families. We have watched their lifestyle. And here we are today, as we look at them, we can be able to state that man has lived according to the word of the Lord. That man has gone against the grain. That woman has stood up against the currents. He, she has stood up against what everyone else is saying that we can be able to say automatically, here is one an individual who is wearing a white toga and who is not flowing around with the crowd going counterculture. God's call for us is to be non-conformed reformist. God's call for us is to be able to start a movement, a movement of the discontented a movement of those who are not waiting for the critical mass in order to go in a certain direction. A movement of the convicted individuals. A movement of those who have a persuasion and a conviction. A movement of those who will take a stand in the direction that they will go. Are you one of those? And are you thinking of someone who is like that, whom you might vote in, in the various elective positions that are coming soon. But secondly, Samuel was a faithful witness, faithfully witnessing. We see again in chapter 3 of 1 Samuel, from verse 10 onwards, that Samuel had a dream. And the Lord came and spoke with him. And after the Lord spoke with him, his boss, you may say, who was Eli, called him to ask, what did the Lord say to you? The Bible records to us Samuel was candid and forthright with Eli, although he initially feared. He told him that judgment was coming upon his household, that the life that his sons were living could not be condoned anymore and could not be covered anymore. Although he was afraid, he took the side of God and was faithfully declaring the word of the Lord to Samuel, he, to, to, to Eli. Here is one individual who did did not compromise. He spoke out even when it was against his bows. He spoke out without fearing that he would be thrown under the bus, and that did not happen. Nor was he fixed for being a whistleblower. Nor did he find himself in court as a victim. Nor did he find himself thrown in the river Jordan, or might we say in the river Yala, for having spoken out against the things that were. There may be some of us who have seen the evil that is lacking both within us as individual, individuals, but also the evil that is lacking in the system. That there are systemic institutional evil that is raised up against the nation and against the people of God. Systemic evil that is taking away, that is the parasite that we started talking with uh, as men and women are taking away and leeching, uh, as leeches uh, taking away from us. Uh, that there may be systemic evil that is eating on our society. That we, like Samuel, may be faithful witness, uh, people who are willing to stand whether it is costly and people who 
are willing to pay the sacrifice in order to stand out for the truth rather than psychophones who are singing out our melodies to our favorite leader even when they are going wrong. A nation that does not tolerate truth is burying its head in the sand and aggravating the situation. We've got to gain critical mass that can change the narrative about our nation, that we are helpless before the ogre of corruption. We've got to come out and be able to speak and be bear witness that there is a truth out there and be candid about it. That is what a candidate is. He's a candid person. The Russian writer Leo Tolstoy, in his book, The Awakening Tales of a Young Man, Simonson, who while a student made up his mind that the wealth of his father, who was an officer of the commissary department, was accumulated dishonestly. He then declared to his father, that the wealth ought to be returned to the people. He also made a commitment to have nothing to do with the wealth of his father because he said it was acquired illegally. What if we had a few wives questioning the source of the wealth of their husbands? What if we had a few sons and daughters raising matters with their parents? How did we acquire all this wealth? What if we had a few parents questioning the wealth of their children? What if we had a few pastors calling their members to find out the stories that are circulating about them, whether there are some truths in those stories? Ladies and gentlemen, the call is for us to bear witness to the truth that we know, and people who bear this witness are the kind that wear the white toga because they're speaking candidly to the situation as it ought to be. And thirdly, finishing well. Samuel is an old man, and he comes to the end of his life and looks back on his lifelong administration and he calls the people to witness against him. He even calls on God and is anointed, in other words, the king, to bear witness against him as well. Then he asks the people an amazing question. Is there any of you who can point out the ill that I have done? Have I defrauded any of you? Have I taken someone's donkey? Have I oppressed anyone? Have I blinded someone with bribes? Here is Samuel at the end of his life, and he puts himself through public scrutiny, a vetting platform in which he says, check on me. If anyone has something against me, let him bring it out. He's requesting to be vetted since the days of his youth. He not only offers himself for this exercise before the people and before the king, but he also offers himself before the Lord. Let everyone vet me whose items, whose property have I stolen. He goes through a list of possible corruption allegations that would have been raised against him. And with this question, the people shake their heads. With these questions, the people said, you haven't. With this question, the people say, they give him a clean bill. Having overcome the little challenges that he had in his younger days, gave him the strength and the capability to overcome greater challenges when he reached the high or the honorable officer later on. And this is the encouragement and the challenge that we will throw to us today. The possibility that there may be one or two of us who are vying for the office, a honorable office, whether as at the county level or at the Senate level, or at the Parliament level. And as we vie for that office, we deeply know within us that there is something out there that we have done and someone can pinpoint and say, you have done this, you have done the other, you have done this, and you have done that. The call for us, therefore, is a call to turn to the Lord in sincerity, 
If there is an accusation against us, let go of it and let the Lord take over and give us the liberty and the freedom that we need to have in order to honor him and live for him. Who of you convicts me of sin? It is Jesus who raised that question again in John chapter 8, verse 46. Who convicts me of sin? And Samuel brings this out as well. Who convicts me of mistreatment of the people of Israel? Who brings an accusation against me? And with every question, he comes out clean. I wonder, how about you? How has your journey been so far? How did you get that plot of land that you own? How did you build or acquire that house that you are living in? Is the car you are driving a clean car? What about the certificate you are using? Are the goods you have been importing, are they clean? How have you used the money that has been put in your charge in that office? The Russian writer, as I mentioned before, had this young man who said, I'm not going to take and be engaged in anything that is unclean. I will walk in cleanliness in my life. A number of years ago, a lady by the name of Julia Sebutinde was a young magistrate in Uganda. Due to her intolerance of corruption, the president, President Museveni, made her to investigate corruption in the Uganda Revenue Authority. After that, she did an excellent job. She was asked to investigate corruption in the Ugandan army. This earned her so many enemies to the extent that actually even her house was petrol bombed. After a while, this lady was promoted to be an ICC judge in The Hague. What made her move from one position to another position? It is the integrity, the candidness, the authenticity, the genuineness in her life. I pray that that would be the trademark of our lives. Samuel concludes these remarks by urging for prayer. And he said, may God forgive me if I do not uphold you in prayers. He was going to be a man on his knees for his nation, praying that God would bring about the best quality in the nation. And that would be the prayer of my heart today, that as we head towards election, that we would be praying wherever we are, praying as individuals, calling on the name of the Lord that we may see his favor and his faithfulness in all that we do, that every individual Christian would be on their knees, beckoning to God and calling on him, that God may intervene on behalf of our nation. And to this, we would give ourselves as we cry out to God that he may intervene on our behalf. One of my friends wrote a poem, a poem he called, the world needs such leaders. The world needs leaders who cannot be bought, whose word is their promise, who put character above wealth, who possesses opinions and a will, who are larger than their vocations, who do not hesitate to take chances, who will not lose their individuality in a crowd, who will be honest in small things as well as in great things, who will make no compromise with wrong, whose ambitions are not confined to their own desires, who will not say they do it because everybody else is doing it. The world needs such leaders. Are you one of those leaders who are wearing a toga? I pray that the Lord may guide and lead us into the direction he wants us to go. Let us pray together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. And we pray that you equip us in moments like this as we head towards our election. That we'll be a people and individuals who are taking on the responsibility to walk your way and to speak the truth that there would be honesty in our lives, that we'd be a people of integrity. Help us in our voting patterns, that we'd also vote those people who are true candidates, people who are working in integrity, so that you may be honored and glorified. We thank you and we bless you as we commend ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And may the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let's appreciate Bishop for sharing that word.
As the psalmist declared, the entrance of God's word brings light and understanding. And I'm sure that you're enlightened, you're inspired, you're equipped for engagement in this season. And so we, we thank God for our bishop. And I'd love for you to share with us right there in the comment section uh, what, what your key takeaway is. And if you have any questions, remember that this coming week on Tuesday at uh, 5 p.m. East African time, we'll have After Sunday Live a great time of learning, and our presiding bishop will be present, ready to take whatever questions you may have around the message he's shared today. And then on Wednesday, we have our midweek time of prayer. We must be a people of prayer. We join together Wednesdays, 6 p.m. East African time, and we're live on Hope FM, Hope TV, and of course, our Sitam Church online platforms. Do you need prayer support? You can actually send your prayer requests in advance in readiness for Wednesday. Do you have a testimony? Share it with us. Tell us what the Lord is doing in your life. And let's continue tweeting, posting, using that hashtag, looking for a leader. And for those who have surrendered their lives to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ today, would love to walk alongside you and help you grow in this faith. And so there's a number that I want to share with you now. Take note of this contact and just let us know that you're one of those who surrendered to Jesus. 0728-221-221. That's 0728-221-221. That's our WhatsApp number, and you can engage with us and tell us. Tell us all that's going on in your life and the kind of support that you need. And so we are sure that as we go forth into this week, we are equipped and we are ready to face the week. Uh, and now we just want to turn to the Lord and declare God's benediction over you. That as you go forth into this new week, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you. May the Lord grant you his grace. May he grant you his peace. Thank you for being part of CBS Family Service today. We value you. May God richly bless you. Amen.